Welcome back and welcome to lesson six in our Learn JavaScript on the Now platform series. This is where I start talking a little bit more about strings and what you can do with them. Because in one of the previous lessons, I was talking about arithmetic operators and I said that plus, when you use two numbers, plus adds the value. Six and 10 becomes 16, very easy to figure out. But plus, when used with strings, concatenates them together and we'll see that as we get going here. So let's take a look at this. I have two string variables here denoted by var, which is my keyword for declaring variables, first name using the camel case notation that I said before, and then look closely. I'm going to zoom in on that. This has a double quotes. That is the wrong keyboard. That's why it's binging at me. So this has a double quotes in it. Make that a little bigger for you. This has double quotes, Chuck, and single quotes. Either is okay as long as you end with what you start with. That's the key. Now, I can also run into problems, though, when I say my car equals Chuck's car and try to run that. I'm just going to hit the run script down here. I want to make that as big as possible. It says, um, you're missing a semicolon before some statement on line seven. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wish I had line numbers here, but I don't. And it's like missing a semicolon. There's a semicolon on line seven. What are you talking about? So that statement doesn't necessarily mean you're missing a semicolon. It could mean that your quotes are mismatched. And you're like, well, aren't they matched? Yeah, kind of, sort of, not really. Let me go back in my browser. And the parser is going to see this first quote and say, okay, that's the end of the string. I got a matching close quote. Now what's next? What? This doesn't make any sense. I don't know what you're trying to tell me here. And that's where it goes off the rails. So to fix that, I can easily just surround a single quote with a double quote and it will run. Let's get that back down to a size. I can actually see the run script button and, oh, unterminated string literal. Ah, I got a single and a double. You probably all watched me do that and said, ha ha, now that I have a double quote on the end, it runs. It doesn't actually output anything. What if I want my first name and last name stored in a new variable called name? Well, I could say first name, get the right variable name, plus last name and mash these two together. Let's use our good friend GS info to output the name variable value. And it says, Chuck Jamaski. No, there's, there's a space in there. I want a space. And I could do that in one of two ways. The first way is I could put a space at the end of here, which isn't exactly my first name. I could put it there, which isn't exactly my last name. That kind of throws things off. Or I can use that plus to my advantage and put in a literal string value in there. In this case, a string of one character. It's a plus. And when I do that, it puts the plus in my name. And now I have a variable value with my name in it. That's all good and dandy, right? Works fine. There's also another piece that I want to show you that strings give you by default, and it's used a lot, and that's the length of the string. And if I want to get the length of my name, I count, well, there's five, and there's another six, that's 11, plus the space, that's 12. I should get a 12, and I can get that Let's put it in a variable, len equals name dot length. It will return an integer. This is a built-in JavaScript thing for strings. This is not specific to ServiceNow. So no matter what implementation of, of, of JavaScript you use, this will be in there. As long as you've got strings, you've got a length property. That's what it's called, a property. And I get that by variable name dot length, as you see here, name dot length. And then I can use GS info. Now let's use this to our advantage and say length of name equals len. And now I have a label out in front of the value. Unlike this one, which is just the variable value. This one I can read a little better. That is a very common construct for debugging when you want to see what the values are of your variables as they're running, or if you, they're not returning the values that you expect, you could put this in and it will go into the log file and you can parse it out from there. So length is a great way to determine what you've got in the string. So that is all I've got for this one. Just some very simple string uh, de declaration, concatenation, and 
the length property. I will talk to you more about strings in the next video. So join me there, will you? Take care.